your first stint, you mentioned like, okay, Kobe beat you the first go around. Mm -hmm. Now you get an opportunity to play with Kobe. Mm -hmm. Kobe was very, very hard on you. That's why teams didn't want. Him. That's why teams didn't want. Him. Dwight Howard's hidden secrets are making waves in the rumor mill, and it appears that the late NBA legend, Kobe Bryant, may have been privy to some of them. The grapevine is buzzing with speculations that Howard's shady past could have been the reason behind Bryant's apparent disdain for him. In fact, Bryant once voiced his disdain for him. So what exactly did Kobe say about Howard? <laughs> well, I would have said that you, you and Dwight said we don't like each other. Do you, do you agree with that? <laughs> I can't help it. Like, I mean, he's a teddy bear. I can't help him. <laughs> Kobe Bryant allegedly never liked Dwight Howard, and at first, many people never understood why. But it has recently been made crystal clear for the public. The former Los Angeles Lakers star said Harper came to his home on July 19, 2021. Howard admitted that they went to his room, took off their clothes, and kissed. The contentious relationship between Kobe Bryant and Dwight Howard is a tale that dates back to 2012, when they were unexpectedly thrust into a tumultuous partnership as teammates for the Los Angeles Lakers. The seeds of their animosity were sown right from the start, and their tumultuous journey unfolded publicly, leaving a trail of memorable moments and colorful insults. The roots of their turbulent relationship can be traced back to the summer of 2012, when Dwight Howard was traded from the Orlando Magic to the Los Angeles Lakers. For Kobe Bryant, it became apparent almost immediately that this union was not going to be a harmonious one, and the prelude to their discord can be encapsulated in a brief post-trade phone conversation. Jalen Rose, a longtime Lakers adversary and now an ESPN personality, was privy to the unfolding drama. He recalled the moment when news of the trade deal broke and Howard called Bryant. The day he heard Dwight Howard was going to get traded to them, Howard called Bryant, Rose said. So Kobe takes the call, and I might have heard some of the conversation, and I might have heard Dwight asking him about L.A. and some of the off-the-court things, whatever. And Kobe got off the phone and said, this S ain't going to work. That single phone call set the tone for the tumultuous relationship between Kobe Bryant and Dwight Howard. Bryant's immediate assessment, even before they had a chance to lace up together for a game, was that Howard's mindset and priorities were not aligned with his championship aspirations. Bryant made his stance clear, he was there to win championships, and he expected the same commitment from his teammates. The fact that Howard seemed more interested in off-the-court matters, such as producers and other distractions, did not sit well with the fiercely competitive Bryant. One of the most memorable slights Kobe Bryant directed at Dwight Howard was his reference to him as a teddy bear. This choice of words was emblematic of the diminishment of Howard's perceived toughness and grit, a direct contradiction to the relentless intensity that Bryant demanded from himself and his teammates. You see, the Bryant-Howard rivalry had reached its zenith during a heated game between the Lakers and the Houston Rockets. In the heat of the moment after securing a defensive rebound, Howard swung his elbows around, seemingly attempting to fend off Bryant. In the process, he ended up elbowing Bryant directly in the jaw. The referee immediately blew the whistle to stop the play, but the two players continued to exchange words and engaged in a verbal altercation. The media, as always, sought Kobe Bryant's thoughts on the incident. Bryant, ever the consummate competitor, downplayed the altercation, asserting that such incidents were an inherent part of the game. He thrived on the intensity and physicality of basketball. However, the Lakers' head coach at the time, Byron Scott, contradicted Bryant's perspective by stating that the Mamba genuinely despised Howard. He insinuated that there was a palpable disdain between the two. Kobe Bryant, always candid and unapologetic, vehemently disagreed with Scott's interpretation of the situation. He chose a more unconventional approach by characterizing Dwight Howard as a teddy bear. <laughs> Byron said that you, you and Dwight said we don't like each other. Do you, do you agree with that? <laughs> I can't help it. Like, I mean, he's a teddy bear. I can't help him. Like <laughs> Kobe's reference to Dwight Howard as a teddy bear, in the midst of their heated rivalry and tumultuous partnership, can be approached from multiple angles. 
On one hand, Kobe's words may indeed reflect his admiration for Howard, perhaps implying that he held Howard in high regard. A teddy bear, after all, is often associated with being soft and cuddly, traits that can be endearing. However, when we consider this in the context of recent revelations about Howard's personal life, a different perspective emerges. Allegations of Howard having same-ass relations with other men have come to light, and this might offer a different interpretation of Kobe's choice of words. Now, I understand that in the 21st century, embracing one's true self and being authentic about one's orientation is not only widely accepted, but also celebrated. There's no wrongdoing in Howard being true to himself and living his life authentically. However, the crux of the matter, from Kobe's standpoint, may have been Howard's alleged misconduct with other individuals, especially in the context of allegations of S.A. So Dwight Howard is sued for and battery by a man he allegedly met on Instagram. For context, in a legal case that sent shockwaves through the public, Stephen Harper took former Lakers star, White Howard, to court over allegations of assault, battery, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and false imprisonment. This sensitive and troubling incident occurred in the state of Georgia on July 19, 2021, but it was only recently resolved casting a spotlight on issues related to consent, safety, and accountability. The story came to light through a report published by Radar Online, which included screenshots of messages exchanged between Stephen Harper and the NBA champion Dwight Howard. These messages provided a glimpse into the intricate web of events that led to the legal battle. According to court documents, the disturbing saga began with months of explicit message exchanges between Harper and Howard. What initially seemed like consensual conversations gradually escalated, culminating in Howard's invitation to Harper to visit his residence for an intimate encounter. However, things took an unexpected and distressing turn on that fateful summer night. When Harper arrived at Howard's home, he was met not only by the former basketball star, but also by another individual who presented themselves as a woman under the name Kitty. Harper claims that he did not consent to the sudden inclusion of a third party and expressed his objections. Nevertheless, Howard reportedly urged him to stay, leading to a profoundly unsettling and uncomfortable situation. The crux of Harper's lawsuit centers around the assertion that Howard and Kitty engaged in a cell acts, and Harper was allegedly coerced into participating against his will. Harper states that even after he said no, Howard insisted that he would proceed regardless of Harper's objections and assured him that he would eventually find the experience pleasurable. It is essential to understand the gravity of this situation, as it involves issues of consent, personal boundaries, and emotional distress. Harper claims that he feared for his safety if he resisted the S advances, highlighting the power dynamics and manipulation that can occur in such situations. After the incident concluded, Harper was left in a state of profound shock, feeling violated and humiliated. He sought to leave Howard's residence using an Uber, but his attempt to distance himself from the distressing situation was not met without further challenges. Dwight Howard compelled Harper to accept a ride from Kitty, further complicating the already perplexing turn of events. But Dwight Howard has denied the accusations. In a response filed this week by his attorney, Howard described the 2021 encounter at his home in the Atlanta suburbs as consensual and requested that the case be dismissed. In court documents obtained by ESPN, Howard said Monday that he engaged in consensual S activity with a man named Stephen Harper during a July 2021 encounter at Howard's Georgia residence. Howard denied that he caused any injury to Harper, according to the filing. One of Howard's attorneys, Justin Bailey, said Harper initiated legal action as a form of extortion after the eight-time All-Star ceased communication. What was a private consensual encounter was made public for profit, and Mr. Howard looks forward to bringing the truth to light in a court of law, Bailey told ESPN. The allegations against Mr. Howard are contested. Mr. Howard intends to present the truth. The truth is, Mr. Howard blocked Mr. Harper on social media and then was confronted with two options, pay to protect his reputation or have a fabricated story made public. Despite being an easy target due to the subject matter and his status as a celebrity, Mr. Howard chose to trust in the justice system and will rely on all future court filings to speak for themselves. But this is not the first time Dwight Howard has been involved in a scandal of such magnitude. In 2019, the basketball player was involved in another legal dispute after Massina Lige claimed he was in a same-s relationship with him. Howard gave an interview to Fox Sports to deny the claims. 
Howard has also been on the receiving end of multiple essay accusations by the mother of his oldest child, a former Orlando Magic cheerleader named Royce Reed. Howard has legally recognized five children with multiple women, but there are allegations that he has fathered up to eight kids. Meanwhile, Stephen A. Smith, a prominent sports commentator and talk show host, firmly believes that the reason no other professional sports team showed interest in signing Dwight Howard was due to the looming cloud of essay accusations against him. Smith made this assertion on his popular talk show, The Stephen A. Smith Show, where he delved into the potential factors that led to the lack of offers for the embattled athlete, Howard. He opened up the discussion by expressing his personal viewpoint on the matter, stating, Let me tell you what came to my mind when I thought about this. That's why teams didn't want him. This statement immediately set the tone for the conversation, emphasizing the importance of considering the impact of Howard's legal troubles on his marketability as a professional athlete. Smith was careful not to point fingers or cast blame directly on any particular teams or individuals, emphasizing, now whether they're going to admit it or not, and I'm not going to mention teams because I don't want to incriminate anybody or accuse anybody of something I simply don't know, I'm guessing. By making this statement, he acknowledged the complexity of the situation, as well as his his own limitations in definitively pinpointing any one reason for Howard's lack of offers. Smith went on to explain that his initial suspicion is that the player's lack of a team is probably due to the allegations. That's why teams didn't want him. That's why teams didn't want him. In this context, he highlighted the critical nature of public perception and the willingness of teams to take on the potential baggage that accompanies such serious allegations. To provide additional context, it's worth mentioning that Dwight Howard did train with the Golden State Warriors during the offseason, although nothing materialized from his sessions in San Francisco. For context, in 2022, the Veteran Center sat down at Showtime's All the Smoke podcast to talk about his future in the league. I want to play, but at the same time, there's like no teams that really want to allow me to play, Howard said to Matt Barnes. That's how I've been feeling from the last situation with the Lakers. I felt like I did enough to help them win a championship to really deserve a spot on the team and a chance to start and get big minutes and it didn't happen. After that, I was like, man, I don't want to have to bust for another whole summer, train three a days, go on a crazy diet, do all this tea and then get back to a team and sit on the bench or not get to really help somebody win. He continued. And it's been like, damn, do I want to just call it quits and do some other stuff or go back at it and show people I still got it. In his last season with the Lakers, Howard played in 60 games and averaged 6.2 points and 5.9 rebounds in just 16 minutes of play. Seen as one of the few remaining old school centers in the league, the former Orlando Magic superstar now struggles to find his place. I want to go out on top, I still got it, I can still hoop," he concluded, expressing his desire to prove his worth. However, according to Stephen A. Smith and many social media users, the cloud of essay accusations against Dwight Howard is likely the main reason why teams have been avoiding him like the plague. You see, while it's essential to remember that accusations should be thoroughly investigated and considered within the legal framework, it's clear that public perception and the potential for distraction and controversy have a profound impact on an athlete's marketability and desirability to teams. Stephen A. Smith's comments highlight the delicate balance that teams must strike between evaluating an athlete's talent and weighing the potential consequences of signing a player with serious legal issues hanging over them. In Howard's case, it appears that the accusations have made it challenging for him to find a new team and continue his professional basketball career. In light of these allegations and the surrounding controversy, the 37-year-old responded to his apparent haters on social media in two unusual videos shared on his TikTok account. In the first of these clips, Howard is initially seen typing on his computer before picking up the phone and slowly descending into a vicious rage, a portrayal made all the more extreme by the video being sped up. The post is captioned, how they want me to respond to haters online along with a laughing emoji. However, the second post managed to surpass it in terms of wackiness. In this clip, Howard is standing behind what appears to be a genuine lion as it lets out a menacing roar before the former Orlando Magic and LA Lakers star attempts his own one. The video was a response to a message from another TikTok user which read, We just want to know who Kitty is, bro. Meanwhile, fans have commented on the allegations made against Howard, with one particular fan stating, Dwight Howard is sick. I can see why the NBA has backed away from him. A second fan added, I think Kobe knew this about him and that's why Kobe didn't like him. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.